Hello, welcome back to the Statistics with Open Office course. Today we're starting to look at something which is very interesting to me, and that is an X and Y scatter plot. Now, an X and Y scatter plot is specifically there to help us understand how two variables are related. So, in this example, we are again working at Rob's Diner, and we see that on the left hand side we have the number of burgers sold, and then on the right hand side we have the orders of fries. And we can hypothesize and say that maybe as we sell more burgers, we will get more orders of fries. And you could really look at any number of variables. You could say, is a person's height, the taller they are, do they have a bigger shoe size? The more hours that a person studies, do they tend to get a higher grade in their classes? But for our example, we're looking at burgers and fries. So. The way that we want to do this is, again, just like everything else, we want to highlight our data, making a note that we are including labels in our first two rows. We will then go to our chart icon. Again, just like all the other charts, we see the initial interactive chart pop up, and we're looking for an X and Y. This is also called a scatter plot. Now, we can do a lot of different things with this. We can do points and lines, but for a lot of times, that really doesn't aid the visual. So I like to do just a simple points. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can go to the chart elements. We can make sure that we put our title. So this is going to be, again, Rob Steiner. The subtitle is going to be Burgers and Fries. Now the x-axis, remember the x-axis is the axis that goes left to right. This is going to be our first column. So we will put number of burgers. Now the y-axis is the up and down axis. This is going to be, in other words, the orders of fries. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Now, one last thing we want to check, which is already checked for us, but we want to make sure that the first row is a label, because if we don't have this checked, you're going to see how it shifts our diagram, right? We don't want that to happen. So, the first row is a label, and now it correctly plots this as orders of fries. So, let's go ahead and click Finish. Now, just like all the other charts, we can move this around on the screen. The one click gives us these green squares and the four cross arrows, and we can move this over here to get a better view. Now, we can change the line from one click, or we can change it from doing two clicks. But let's go ahead and change this to a continuous, and you know what, let's make this a red line with a little bit of width. Now, we can give two clicks and we get this gray line again, just like we've seen with all the other charts. Let's right click and change our area to something, something a little bit more interesting. Let's go with a really light blue. Okay, so we've changed that. We have our nice red outline. Now, remember, the more clicks we do, we access more features. So one click gives us the very basic features of moving the chart, changing the boundary. Two clicks, we get a little bit deeper into the chart. Now three clicks, and we're working with this actual chart area itself. So we can move this area bigger or smaller. Um, let's go ahead and change the title. So again, just like everything else, if we, if we misspell the title, so Rob's Diner, let's say that we wanted instead this to be Rob's Diner Update because perhaps we did this you know, a few months ago and we want to see how things have changed. The important takeaway is that you can interactively change this. You don't have to create a whole new chart. So we have our basic chart here. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more advanced. Let's see this low sales here where we have a really low number of orders of fries. So let's go ahead and click on this. And we have these data points. But now that we're on the data point, we specifically want to change this specific value, right? So if we select the data points as a whole, and how do we do that? Remember, it's three clicks. One, two, and then, sorry, one, two, and then three. Now we right click, and we can format the entire series, right? And that's going to change the series as a whole, so let's make it just, just yellow for now. And uh, I don't like that line. Let's, let's go ahead and get rid of that. 
you know, sometimes you just need to try stuff out and see if you like it or not, but I'm just really not a fan of the line because it doesn't do a good job of connecting the points in any way that makes sense. So we're back to just our yellow points. Now we want to highlight this one where we have two burgers sold and only one order of fries, right? Because that was a low, slow day for us, right? So let's go ahead, just like we said, one, two, one, two, and then three, click on this. Now we specifically want this data point. So this is gonna be our fourth click. We are actually clicking on that and we see the green box, right? So now that we have the green box all around, we can do a right click and we can format this specific data point. Uh, just to show that it was a really bad day for us, we are going to make it red. So there you have a very basic scatter plot, an X and Y scatter plot, that shows how our orders of burgers and fries are related. And as we interpret this chart, we can see that if we try to draw a line through here, in general, it looks like the trend is upward, right? So. We're going to talk a little bit later on about correlation and I'm actually going to show you how to put a line through here that estimates the correlation between these two variables. But for now, it's just important to understand how to do the line, sorry, the scatter chart itself, the X and Y scatter. I'll show you how to draw the line next time. I hope this video has been useful and I will see you for the next video.